Hey there, folks. Another day, another mod. Uh, so today I have a uh, new USB Type-C um, charge port mod for the SP. This one is from Giltessa here. It's actually remarkably similar to the Funny Playing one that I had very, very recently installed. Uh, it looks like Giltessa is using a... Um, Similar thickness board, but a slightly different part. Uh, the USB Type-C port that Funny Playing had used uh, was a little bit proud of the board itself. You can see looking in the back of here that the port doesn't rest on the board itself, but a little bit above it. Um, this is the same idea, but with a slightly lower port and the same board thickness, it's actually going to sit just just a hair lower in the SP, but all things considered, it should still fit in a slate. Um, before we begin, uh, th this is the um, this is the little board tree sprue um, panel, whatever you want to call it, uh, that the funny playing mod was attached to. So that's why I was using it as a comparison for the uh, board thickness, because this is basically a piece of that board. Anyway, um, before we continue, this is an advanced soldering mod. Um, a lot of the other stuff I show off on, on my channel, it's pretty obvious looking at it, whether it's, you know, on the lower end of the difficulty scale or the higher end. This one looks like it's on the lower end, but trust me when I say it's on the higher end. Not because this is difficult to install, but because this is extremely difficult to remove for novices. Uh, once you've got a feel for the tools, um, get a little bit more comfortable soldering, um, it's a little bit easier, but there are a lot of caveats to removing this specific part from the Game Boy Advance SP motherboard. And if you are not careful, you will lift pads. I, it, you, you not, you won't, might mess it up, you will mess it up. It is, trust me, I have seen a lot of people um, posting on like Reddit, Discord, you know, they'll post a picture of the board with the charge port removed and between one and six pads are ripped uh, and there's only six pads. So yeah, it's it's not that bad, but it does does require quite a bit of experience. Uh, on my end, something that doesn't often come through in the videos themselves, uh, but I have said at least a few times, um, I have over a decade of experience soldering. So when I'm over here, you know, waving around my iron and such, um, I tend to make things look a little bit easy because they are for me, but the vast majority of, uh, of soldering is feel. Like, uh, I, I worded that totally wrong. Like, the biggest component to being able to solder successfully is having a good feel for what it should feel like, what it, how it should act. Um, and like I said, I've been doing it almost a decade. So, well, over a decade. I'm quite familiar with it at this point. Anyway, let's move on. I trust that was... Um, a decent disclaimer. Anyway, what I've got here, a prototype slate that we're going to go ahead and, and install this in. Um, for context, there are three generations of slate. Um, as of filming this video, the third generation is the one that is currently available. Um, the first two generations were not laminated. So if you're looking at this going, oh, how do I know which one I have? Well, if you have a laminated screen, you have a third gen. It is what it is. Um, I wanted to install it in this specific mo uh, this specific slate. Uh, this is one of my first gens here, uh, but unfortunately the spacing is a little bit different between the port and the back of the screen. Um, and I just wanted to give it the best chance that it has, you know, make sure it actually works properly in a slate. The funny playing one does. I don't have a port cover for this one. Uh, I got two ports, but only one port cover. Um, I'm not too concerned about it because there is a mile-wide panel gap with this generation slate 
anyway, so it is what it is. Uh, but anyway, we're not going to be installing it in this third gen either because this one already has a USB Type-C mod. More on that later. Uh, this is going to be our donor for the evening. Um, like I said, it's a second generation slate, so it's a little bit older, uh, slightly different design than what you might see on the current shipping models. Um, but, eh, realistically, the only real difference between this one and the, the third gen is that these ones aren't laminated. There's an air gap between the lens and the screen. Uh, you can see it a little bit better. On that side, you can even see the housing between the lens and the screen. Um, while I'm taking it apart, this specific slate uh, was actually a retail sample that we ordered before submitting the big order for actual retail lot. Uh, so this is a uh, final, well, what we thought was going to be final design. Uh, how many screws did I take out? One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Only five screws in a slate, six in a normal SP. Um, oop. This square nut, if this falls out, um, this is actually retained in the rear housing. Uh, the point of this is, that's what the battery cover screws into. Um, some of these are directional. So this one has a flat side and then the other side has a chamfer. You put the chamfer down if you have a chamfer. If not, or if both sides are chamfered, then, well, it doesn't matter. But that just sits in the housing there. Might as well put it back so I don't lose it. Anyway, once we've got this out, there are three more motherboard screws. This SP already has two different mods. Uh, it has an overclock mod right here, and I have a power switch mod um, right here. I, I've been kind of using this slate to beta test this mod, and I'm not really happy with how it performs, so I'm not going to release it. Um, there's still some bugs to work out, but no, none of this should be relevant to our install here. Got prototype buttons in here too. Anyway, uh, once we've got the board out, we can set the housing aside. Won't need to do anything else. Uh, what is all of this nonsense? Oh, those are that's for the overclock. Okay, never mind. All right, so we're gonna start with removing the uh, OEM charge port. Of course, I'm starting with an SP that works totally perfect, even though I have plenty of SPs that don't have working charge port. Um, I'm going to use two soldering irons to remove it. First one is going to be my Hako FR301. It is a massive soldering iron, but it has a special property to it. Um, I pull this, this trigger that is helpfully labeled vacuum and... <coughs> turns on a vacuum pump because there is a hole in the tip that it sucks solder through. Uh, this tool replaces um, like the, the suction cup thing, not the suction cup, the syringe looking thing, the solder sucker that I usually use. There it is. This is good, but this is better. <laughs> anyway, uh, once this is heated up, Just regular soldering iron. <coughs> Wipe that off. I am going to use it to tin the pads for the charge port. Get some fresh solder on there. And then I'm going to come in here, place it over, <coughs> and suck out the solder. Usually give it a good wiggle while sucking and uh, takes care of most everything. Uh, now I'm going to just simply poke these tabs and see if they move independently from the board. So this one did, but this one does not, which means this one is still soldered down. So I'm just going to hit it again. 
And sometimes it's easier to just tin it again and start over. But oh, there it goes. So it's nice and loose now. So I've got the two through hole pads lifted. I don't have to worry about these anymore. If I just reef on this thing, I'll rip these six surface mount pads up, um, but I won't have to worry about those ones. To get these surface mount pads, I am going to use, oh, I didn't even have that on. Uh, turn that off so it cools down. Um, I'm going to swap to the regular soldering iron here. I'm going to use a method that I've shown before, and I genuinely think it is the easiest way to remove these ports. Um, but again, this is years of experience that allows me to do this sort of stuff. So how I'm going to do this, I'm going to come in here and just tin each leg again. Um, I just want to throw plenty of solder on there, plenty of fresh solder even. And I don't even care that they're shorted. I just want a lot of solder there and I want there to be fresh solder. So that's what it looks like. Be extraordinarily careful of those three caps right behind the port. If you uh, remove those, you could affect the stability of the CPU itself. You know, it could crash in games um, or just not work at all. Um, and especially if you mess up these pins, those are extremely close together. That is a very difficult fix for a novice when it comes to soldering. And if you mess up these pins, well, guess what? They connect to the LCD connector, so you won't have the working screen. Anyway, with that all nice and uh, prepared, I'm just going to keep adding solder until I can hit all six pins simultaneously with my solder blob. And then I just walk the port out, just like that. Here, clean up these pads. Ow. Dripped a solder ball on my finger. I'll come in here and clean up these pads too, because I'm gonna save this port. It's perfectly good. Like I said, I've got other SPs with um, less than stellar ports. So, oh, I didn't drip solder on my pad. I just shoved my finger into the suck. Anyway. To get this installed, we are going to line it up. I'm fairly certain that the uh, cutouts in the board and the through-hole pins of the original charge port should line up. So I just got to get those aligned on both sides, and then uh, we're good to go. Start installing. So I am going to get one side tacked down. And to do so, I'm going to just fill one of those holes with solder. Realistically, I probably should have done the other side, huh? Uh, try and get that lined up as best I can while keeping my fingers out of the way. And then I just tack down one side with the soldering iron. I can see the alignment is not the greatest. Uh, on the left side, I can't really see the hole anymore, so I can't, can't see how centered it is, but it does look pretty good flipping it over. Uh, but on the right side, I can see it is proud a little bit. Um, so what I'm gonna do before soldering any of the rest, I'm gonna do a test fit, see how it looks, see how it fits. And everything actually looks good, despite being crooked. And my square nut fell out again. Now, let me do a test fit with the cover, too. This cover, by the way, is uh, resin 3D printed. And you know what? It's totally fine. I think we're going to be good. I'm not even going to bother straightening out the board because externally it looks nice and straight, even if it looks a little bit crooked on the board itself. All right. 
right. I made this mistake when I did the uh, funny playing one on the uh, ITA Game Boy, this bad boy, um, that port. I soldered down every single pad. I just kind of assumed that I'd get it right first try because, I mean, realistically, I usually do. <laughs> but it wasn't lined up, so I had to hot air the darn thing off. Um, trust me, it's a lot easier to just, you know, uh, heat up one pad and then lift the whole thing off instead of having to deal with uh, heating eight pads simultaneously. things I really like about the Giltessa board so far is the fillets are nice and clean and um, fillets. The castellations are nice and clean and you can see the solder wick up the uh, castellation as you solder to it so it makes it a little bit easier to to see when you're getting everything connected. Uh, so so far so good it looks like it's soldered down I think it's soldered down, so I think we're good to go to reassemble. Before I do so, however, just going to do a quick check, plug that in, I get a charge light, flip it over, I get a charge light. So we're probably good. Pop that bad boy back in. Oh, this needs to go back in here. And um, install in an actual SP and not a slate. It's gonna be identical aside from the assembly steps. But you know, if you built a slate, you know how to take it apart. And uh, well, if you have this kind of experience soldering, the experience necessary to do this, then you've probably disassembled a uh, SP before. Anyway, um, real quick, one of the differences between the, actually, I think I'm going to pause here for just a moment and install a mod for this variant slate because this one does not have metal screw posts for the shoulder buttons. It just has these little plastic brackets that I made and they just sit in the housing. I found that gluing these into the housing helps quite a bit with the stiffness. So I'm going to go do that. I'll be right back. Okay, I think the glue is set, so we're good to go. Um, the last one of these older models that I did, I ended up just hot gluing them in and that worked great and I was happy with that because that has a, a, a modicum of reversibility in case I need to swap out these prints, which has happened. Um, the uh, threads strip out super easily on the printed material. Uh, oh, I'm doing this from the wrong angle. And just like the SP, this thing is kind of a pain in the butt to get the ribbon reattached to the board. Um, but unlike the SP, I could just pop this panel off and then I'd get so much more slack on that. Um, it's not too bad though, I'm, I'm used to it. Uh, screws. Put that one in. We can just slip that on. Yep. That's convenient because I forgot to install it. Don't forget your square nut. Mm. 
nuts. Alright, it's in there. We're good. I'm going to do it to screw back. Trying to be exceptionally careful of the tension on those two top ones, because, like I said, those plastic brackets, they strip out very easily. They're kind of brittle. Um, I don't know. I thought, I thought the resin prints would be nice and clean and everything, and yes, they are, but they're also brittle, and that leads to breakage. That ain't right. Something happened. Uh, not only do I not have sound, the colors look totally off. Yeah, I'm missing a channel. Uh, I'm almost tempted to say it's the kit that's in this thing. I feel like I've had this problem before. and then it freezes. Okay. One moment, let me go do some troubleshooting and reseat some cables. Okay, here's a status update. So we're gonna be removing this mod um, because if you recall when I was testing it, uh, I was focused on the screen, but there was also no audio and, well, I had the volume up. Uh, upon closer inspection, I can see that the board is a little bit shifted over and uh, so we have pin one, two, three, four, five, six from right to left, uh, because of course. Um, pin number six is the ground. Pin number five is the mute. Uh, to mute the internal speaker, you short pin number five to pin number six. Well, they're shorted, which means with this mod where it is, I will never have an internal speaker again, which I mean, realistically, I don't actually care that much. But, um, that being said, <coughs> let's turn it into a learning opportunity. So I'm going to try desoldering this thing <coughs> the exact same way I soldered, <coughs> or I guess I desoldered the other one. <coughs> um, unfortunately, I can't see... There's no pins, so I'm kind of hesitant to like get that solder out of there and then just start wiggling it. <coughs> but I'll try it anyway. Yeah, one of those grounds is still soldered. That's unfortunate. And by one, I think I mean both.
try and wick what I can. Hot. I'm not quite so I'm not quite sure how to deal with this to be honest um, because the funny playing board I figured oh yeah we'll just hot air the thing off but I toasted the port and that one doesn't work anymore I kind of don't want to do that again but I don't know how to get that up without using uh, well, three soldering irons, one on each side and then one on the back. Hmm. I don't know. I think I'm going to play with it more um, off screen and then I'll update you guys on what I did. Uh, the goal is to get this off without breaking anything um, so I can scooch it over just a hair. I'm wondering if Maybe I heat the board from the bottom. Actually, yeah, I think that'll work. Let's do that. Come on. There it goes. That'll be good enough. Let's find out. There we go. One moment while this heats up. All right, I think we're good. Still not good enough. I need to crank the heat up on this bad boy. this thing either. Hey! It worked though! Ha ha! Alright. So there, we only needed a hot plate. <laughs> the Hako de- oh, that's still on. The Hako de soldering iron. And then a regular soldering iron. Good lord. If you had to buy the tools to do that, it would have been cheaper to just buy three more SPs. And the mod. Okay. Get these pads cleaned up. And uh, I'm going to try that again. This time I'm going to pay a little bit more attention to the position of the pads on the back. Exact same strategy though. Except I'm going to come at it from this side instead. There we go. Now it looks lined up. Actually, before I solder that down, let's double check that was actually the problem. 
Because even though it looked like it was lined up, it still um, beeped like it was shorting. So 6 and 5 are no longer shorted. And on here are 6 and 5 shorted. They are not. So that was the problem. Cool. I feel a lot better about that after testing. And that alignment is much better. Test the fit. somehow everything still fits. That's good. I got four of the six soldered down. There. Now they all look soldered down and are all pretty much lined up. Uh, I did knock that cap about a little bit, so I'm tempted to just leave it, but we're here. I'll never fix it if I don't. Take two, this time with the cap soldered down and probably no short. Um, let's check charging again. So that's connected, that's connected. It's probably fine this time. Um, let's say we test it. Power that up. And pins five and six are no longer shorted. Wow! Just like that. 
All right, so now I just need to reassemble this thing. Um, whatever, it'll it'll take no time at all. See what I mean? Without the backplate on, so much more slack. the um, this little bezel here oh here it is I want to use the clear one for this I know what happened last time. I fully reassembled it before testing. And that caused the port to shift over. No, I'm kidding. That's not how that works. Oh, the colors are messed up again. But I have audio. I think, I think it needs a new ribbon cable. Whatever. Just... Th this is the reason why I didn't want to release that mod, by the way. It's switched off, but the Game Boy's on. I think it's just a matter of adding in a resistor to make sure that capacitor drains. But... Moving on. Okay. Totally pretending that the screen is nice and perfect. I mean, you saw it working. Um, I've got audio. Everything is happy. Things are fine. My overclock is still working. Actually, in hindsight, it probably crashed last time because this is a bootleg and um, I overclocked it. Uh, anyway, let's try out the USB-C now. So on previous versions of this mod, uh, we needed a dongle, one of these bad boys. Uh, forgive me for not pulling it over more. It's plugged into my audio here and the cable's only so long, but I'm gonna click that in. And if it sounds different, um, that's because it's playing over the speakers now. I can turn them up nice and loud if I want, but doesn't matter too much. We know it's working. Uh, it sounds like I have both left and right as well. Convenient. Now I'm gonna try, I have the Huawei logo up. I'm gonna flip it around. See if it works reversed. And indeed it does. Neat. Next test. Those ports are so tight and there's like nothing to grip on this thing. Um, charging. This is a Type-C host. You can see 
there's nothing on the screen there, uh, which indicates that nothing is plugged in. If I plug in something that supports type C, I'll get a watt counter. If I plug in something that does not support type C, which I don't actually have anything handy on my desk that I can plug in. Um, oh well, it looks like that if it doesn't work. Anyway, and you see, it doesn't work. Actually, I should have left that plugged in, double checked, no charge light. And if I flip this over, we won't be able to rely on that gauge, but I can see the charge light came on and now I have no audio. Hmm. Interesting. Kind of figured that might happen. I didn't want to speculate though. On a uh, non-type C host, on a type A host, we have normal charging, and then if I flip it over, normal charging. Okay, so this is the best compromise yet, but it's still not perfect. Um, type C charging only works in one orientation, it appears, and it only works in, uh, you know, as long as you don't mind having muted audio. Um, that being said, compared to the previous iteration of mods like this, this USB Type-C port here, that works a lot better on a slate. On the old version, they're nice and flush, and you just can't angle a cable in there because the cable shroud is too thick. Uh, not all cables are this bad. As you can see, this um, headphone dongle does actually fit, and well, I swear it did work, but only if the volume's up. Ha! Ta-da! That works, but um, regular USB-C cables, you know, again, the shroud is just a little bit too thick and you can't get that bad boy in. So that was the whole point of um, saying, yeah, technically it works, but you need a modified cable. Um, but with the centered port, it just works. Look at that. Everything just fits. It's brilliant. Um, I've had at my desk for years these modified USB-C cables that I cut the shroud off and just heat shrinked on there so they're nice and low profile. I don't know where to buy low profile cables. I don't know that anyone even sells them, but you can certainly make them if you don't mind cutting up your cables. Um, clearly it's a thing that exists that someone's doing because this headphone dongle does that. Exactly. This fits in the low profile mod. It's like right up against the back plate, but it's not angled or anything. It, it fits. <laughs> it's fine. Um, anyway, this port is super tight, but it does work. I'm pretty pleased with it. Um, I, I guess it's Probably one of the best ones yet. Um, if we compare this to the funny playing one, we've got charging, um, or I've got audio, and if I try plugging in a type C host, we get nothing. No charge, nothing. If I flip it over, nothing, no charge, but it mutes too. Uh, if I use the headphone dongle, Works fine. Do, 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 do. Both orientations. God, that's tight. Um, and then regular type A host charging. Works fine with a low profile connector in both orientations. I'm not gonna test it. You can take my word for it though. Uh, and with the um, regular style cable. So, it's nice for people who like slates, like myself, um, that we have USB-C options now. I swear it was on my to-do list, it just... I have a lot on my to-do list. Anyway, 
I'm pretty pleased with it. I think it's pretty good. It would be nice to see uh, a solution to this Type C shenanigans, but I don't know that there is one without adding additional electronics and making the, the mod so much more expensive. Uh, the problem is that the Type C connector supports multiple modes, yes, uh, but we're using two modes that are wholly incompatible with each other because they're not, like, it, it's two different generations of USB. Um, type C, of course, supports both, but USB itself doesn't. So other devices will use a chip that actually negotiates with whatever you have plugged in. Um, and if it detects your dongle, which is just you know, passive resistors shorting stuff out, fine. But so is type C power delivery on the Game Boy end um, because we just use 5.1K resistors for that. Uh, that works, but that tells it to fall back to standard USB 2.0 mode, the type C dongle. Um, and USB 2.0 does not support alternate audio mode. So it's it's a problem and I don't know that there is a good solution. Um, you'd have to add a chip that lives in the GBASP and is able to actually talk to type C hosts and falls back to alternate audio mode when there's no type C host. Um, I'm sure something exists. I have no idea how much it is but it's more than this, which is a PCB, a Type-C port, a single resistor, and a 3D printed um, bezel. So anyway, I don't know. There's, there's solutions, and realistically, I think this is good enough. Um, just, just being able to charge the console with a Type-C host alone is worth it, I think, especially since the dongle works. I mean, we had other mods that worked um, to charge the console with just Type-C hosts, but they didn't work in slates. So this does, so as far as I'm concerned, it's the, the best mod as of yet, if you want Type-C charging in a slate. Um, otherwise, everything is gonna work pretty much the same in a regular SP. Um, yeah. I mean, that's that's all this is. This is just modified housing for the SP, really. Uh, but anyway, I think that's all I've got. I'll go ahead and throw some links in the description if you want to check this stuff out. Um, shout out to Retro Game Repair Shop for sending this stuff my way to check out, um, specifically the the Type-C audio mod. And um, Giltessa, if you're watching this, very nicely done. Uh, good work. I, I have no real criticisms. Um... I mean, like I said, the, the criticisms, the, the flaws that I have discussed are problems with USB Type-C, not a flaw with your implementation of this mod. Um, very nicely done. I'm very impressed with it. Uh, I'm going to save this other one to install into another GBA SP. Um, we're going to do, we're going to do some crimes with that bad boy. Um, but that's for another time. Uh, I'm just going to let this charge up for a little while until I get the courage to take it apart again and uh, replace that ribbon cable. Well, I was going to say I have to go find one, but really I don't. I just found one sitting on my desk. <laughs> um, shouldn't be too bad. Anyway, that's that's for another time. Um, links in the description. This is a pretty good mod. Thanks for watching. Catch you all next time. Oh, you know what? Easy thing we should test. Um, before moving on, I am going to put in my flash cart here because on the 240p test suite There are audio tests that I totally forgot to do and I'm sure oh I thought the screen fixed itself for a second And I'm sure you guys are just itching to know if the audio is implemented properly So what am I looking for? Not audio sync. I literally had it highlighted. 
Anyway, so we can send pulses to the left channel and the right channel. Obviously in the SP, you can't hear anything because there's one speaker, but if we get this plugged in. I'm gonna get my cheapo headphones here, and this is a TRRS set of headphones um, with the built-in microphone. Should still work uh, because we're not relying on sketchy shit to enable audio, but right is indeed in the right ear, and left is indeed in the left ear. I don't know if this is a mod problem or a quirk of how the SP behaves, but the left pulse is significantly louder in the left earbud, but it is also present in the right earbud. Same thing with the right pulse, but with the opposite earbuds. Now let's try it upside down. Yeah, exact same behavior. But left is left, right is right, all is well. Um, just for comparison's sake though, Let's try it out on the funny playing version and see if we get the same results. That way I can tell if it's a um, SP quirk or mod quirk. Because when running this test on, S on consoles that actually have a headphone jack, um, it doesn't behave that way. Ooh. I didn't anticipate that. On the funny playing mod, I just don't have a right earbud. Or I just don't have a right audio channel. Okay. One more option. Ah, oh, I should have tried it upside down. Shoot. Try this original one. This, I believe, is also a Giltessa mod, just an older version of that. I only have one earbud in. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Because they all do it. Um, the only difference is this one just doesn't have a right channel. I should have tried it upside down too. Maybe it was just a port orientation thing. Um, but even on the left pulse, or on the left earbud when I played the right pulse, I still got a little bit of bleed through. So, I don't know. Um, these mods are all wired up totally by totally different people. Um, or at least these two are the same. But these ones are wired up by totally different people. So, any mistake, I have to assume... You know, they, they wouldn't have repeated it, you know? Ah, it's just bizarre. I didn't hear it before when I was running the testing because I have both my speakers right next to each other. So, yeah, I can hear left channel is biased on the left channel and right channel is biased on the right channel, but I couldn't hear that right audio is being played on the left audio on the left channel as well. Um, it is a lot quieter. It is stereo. You will still hear that stereo separation. In fact, if anything, maybe it's a little bit better because you still get both channels, even though one of them's a little bit de-emphasized. I, I don't know. It's weird. I don't know what's causing it, but I'm glad I ran that test because it helped me discover something that I did not realize. Um, anyway, I think that's all I've got this time around. Uh, so I'll catch you all next time. Keep on keeping on, I guess. Something like that. I don't know. I'm not your boss. Do what you want.